Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about passing a road test, starting a career as a truck or bus driver, or if you are having challenges with your general driving, we will get all of that answered and any questions that you have. Now, just before we get started here, if you like the stream, if you like the channel, be sure to subscribe, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and get all the great information as I get it available for you. Uh... <laughs> so, uh, Bricks for Wheels is here, Corey from Manitoba, Sam is here, Jericho Eric, Arrow, Jericho Arrow, I'll say that correctly, uh, Sam is with Rookie Auto Driving School in the Bronx in New York City there, uh, Corey is in Manitoba, and Corey just recently was successful in getting his license, so uh, congratulations to him. Now, just check to make sure that the sound is working. Um, I was just trying to get that going and trying to get the camera and stuff to work because I had to give up on my C929. I've, I've asked myself, I've basically convinced myself that I need to get a new computer so to keep all of this going. So, Nicholas is from Maine. Hi, Nicholas from Maine. Uh, Thriller Island, you are so welcome. And uh, Sparkle Williams, hi, Sparkle. Now... Sparkle, I want to thank you. I was having a look at the live stream last week because I was, uh, I'm going to crunch it down and just put the highlights together. And Sparkle, you asked me the same question three times last week. And I just want to say that if I get 20 or 30 people on the live stream, it's kind of hard to keep up with all the comments. So the other uh, point that I want to make is if you have a question that you want answered, I'm not ignoring you. It's just that there's a lot of comments that get streaming by here once we get going. So just if you have a question that you really want answered, uh, just ask the question again. And I'll be more than happy to answer that question for you. So uh, where is everybody from? Uh, which part of the world are you in? Most of us are going to be in North America because it's the middle of the night in Europe. And uh, what class of license are you working towards? What class of license are you going to get? So that's the first questions we can ask to get going here. Now, the first thing I want to do is show you the other thing I've been telling you in the live streams is that I have been taking the people who've left comments that they've been successful on their road tests and putting that on the Smart Drive Test website. So, uh, just this week we've had a lot of people, like 25 people. So, you figure, just figure it this way, on the YouTube channel, for probably every 500 views that I get on the channel, probably one of those 500 people leave a comment. So if you got 25, you can figure that, you know, maybe times that by 100, and you probably got the actual number of people who uh, got their license. Hi, George. How are you in Toronto? Uh, whereabouts are you in Toronto? Are you in one of the suburbs there in Toronto or in Toronto proper? So this week we had 25 people leave comments on the Smart Drive Test channel here. You can't actually see that. I need to transition over to that. So I will do that. There we go. Transition. Now you can see it. Okay, so this is the page that I've been putting up on the YouTube channel for successful drivers who've got their road tests in the last week. So doing me, Keisha, Edwin Sherman, uh, Katya. Rose, Stefan, uh, Baldrick, Sherry, uh, Arsalan, Ninya, John, uh, Langris uh, was from Qatar. She got her license this week there and was very grateful. Left me a comment on Facebook. Greg, Reagan, Zimbert, Ascending Tramp, Diane, Abet, Jim, Ricardo, Shazar, Creepy Unicorn, great username, Leo. Carlene, uh, Sylvia, and that's the end of the people this week that have. No, nope, that's this. That. Who have been successful in getting their road test. So if you want to have a look at that, go over to the Smart Drive Test website and down at the bottom on the right hand side, you'll get. Um, sound has a bit of crackling going on. Okay. Maybe I've done something to my mic, Corey, which is unfortunate. Or maybe it's something else in my settings. Anyway, okay, I'll have to explore that. Sorry about that. 
Thriller Island, yes I do have a video on mirror positioning. It's uh, nine steps to setting up the car for new drivers, so have a look at that. Okay, so NorCal says the video is good for him. So Corey, maybe it's something on your end because I did, like I said, I did take the C922 off so that we would get better audio this week because I listened to that video last week and that was really awful. <laughs> Hi Peaches, um, California, Eric. You take your less uh, your test on the first of December. That's awesome. You're going to do well, Edwin. Edwin was one of our successful drivers this week and got his license. Congratulations, Edwin, on getting your license uh, this week. That's really great. And that's great that you're going to continue watching. Oh, and the other piece is is that <laughs> I've been working. I don't know. These videos seem to be taking longer because I'm putting more B-roll in them. But anyway. Uh, curves, corners, and turns. Mostly curves and corners. So I'm on a highway. I'm teaching you how to do curves and corners. I'm hoping to get that video up for you tonight. And uh, that will show you how to go through curves and corners with more control and, you know, a little bit of faster speed as well. So uh, have a look at that. Yeah, Thriller Island, just uh, send me a, uh, a an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com, and I'll send you the link to that video. Okay? Okay, Ruth. Ruth is in Chicago. Uh, the Windy, as it's nicknamed. Ruth, there is a video here on uphill, downhill parking. Essentially, it's the three-in-one rule, Ruth. Uh, so the only time that you turn the, the wheels out towards the center of the road is when you're uphill with a curb. And essentially, you turn the wheels out with, uh, uphill with a curb, and you allow the vehicle to roll back until the steer tires, the back of the front steer tire rolls back against the curb. So that's the only time that you turn the steer tires out towards the curb. Every other time, uh, downhill without a curb, downhill with a curb, and uphill without a curb are all in towards the shoulder of the road. And as well, the other, just one other piece that I will remind you of, the curb has to be at least six inches high. If it isn't six inches high, uh, it's not going to hold the vehicle. So you got to think if it's just one of those little half curbs, and I talk about that in the video, it's not going to hold the vehicle. So um, just keep that in mind that if it's one of those little half curbs, then just turn your wheels into the curb. Just think about it if the vehicle lets go or the parking brakes or whatever's holding the vehicle, which way is the vehicle going to roll off the road? And um, the curb is just there to secure it. Ah, uh, Lily. Hi from, hi from Calgary. Uh, How's the weather in Calgary? It's actually starting to get winter time here and get fall. Uh, Nora, I got my license since almost one year, but I didn't drive and still don't feel confident. Also, my husband isn't encouraging me. How do we make sure on me myself? Thank you. Um, one of the things, Nora, that I would suggest to you is to just get in the vehicle. Uh, have you looked at the, the video on fear and anxiety and how to overcome fear and anxiety? One of the things that I talk about in that video is just uh, getting some exposure to the vehicle. So just go out and sit in the vehicle and start to drive in those types of things. And maybe you could find somebody who's a, who could mentor you who's outside of your husband. You know, that isn't going to cause a lot of rift because I know that kind of stuff can cause some tension between you and your husband. I know you don't want that. But if you can find somebody else that would to help you out, that would be really great. So Sam's here, Jericho Arrow. Jericho Arrow. I have trouble saying that. It's kind of like Marlboro. I have trouble saying that as well. <laughs> so Sam is here. Sam is a driving instructor from Rookie Auto Driving School in the Bronx in New York City. So if you have any questions, you can by all means ask Sam. Uh, Sam is more than happy to an answer your questions. Andrew. Uh, yeah, Andrew, I'm sorry. I haven't got to your question yet. I was going to answer it tonight before I go to bed. <laughs> uh, flashing single orange light at an intersection does. It's not, a, it's not a crosswalk. Okay, so Andrew, is it on the traffic island? Is it, is it in combination with one of the obstruction hazard warning signs? Okay. Yeah, so Sam, Sam says he's back. Uh, Ruth. Okay, so Ruth, when you do uphill downhill parking, after you finish parking the vehicle, it's as if you're going to stop the vehicle and get out. They want you. They want to know that you can park the vehicle and the vehicle is secure and you can leave. So you're probably driving an automatic vehicle, so you have to put the vehicle in drive and apply the parking brake and then secure the vehicle. So say to the examiner, I'm finished and it's ready to go. Okay, so that's what you need to do for uphill downhill parking. All right. Ha <laughs> ha.
Okay, Corey, yeah, I think it might be because somebody else said that the sound was okay. Is, is everybody else uh, hearing me all right with the sound here? Yeah. Okay. George, uh, for G2 license, how much score do I need to pass? I don't know what the demerits is, but I think it's about 10, demerit, 10 or 15 demerit points that you're allowed on a G2 test, okay? So just practice so that you're not going to have demerits on your test. Do the best you can to pass your road test, okay? Nicholas, I'm a CDL owner. I drive uh, and maintain my own dump truck. I have a lot of anxiety about commercial vehicle cops and how to deal with them. Okay, so Nicholas, um, so you're talking about the DOT. Is that who you're talking about? Because you said CDL. So you're in the States, Nicholas. Just clarify that for me. <laughs> Aero yo. Yeah, it could be, Corey. I don't know. Uh, you'd have to ask Sam. <laughs> okay, so Nicholas says the sound's okay. <laughs> Ruth. Uh, yeah, thanks, Ruth. I appreciate that. Okay. So, Waterman ch Man's Child says the sound is good. That's great. Uh, Biotech, thanks for all your work and highly useful tips. Oh, here, let me. You guys aren't seeing the comments. My apologies. I'll put these up here for you. Okay, uh, here we go. There we go. Now everybody else can see it too. There we go. Okay, uh, I got my license on first attempt. Please post some information for new drivers like me to overcome speed anxiety in the highways. Okay, Biotech, uh, I am just working on a video now for you on curves and corners and I've got it done I just got to upload it to YouTube and uh, if I don't get it up tonight I will definitely get it up in the morning for you uh, first thing nine o'clock tomorrow morning okay so I'm gonna do that for you so curves and corners and that will help you a little bit with highways and then I'll do another one specifically on highways for you that will help you with that okay as well uh, biotech make sure you have a look at the video on fear and anxiety and uh, just you know exposure and working on highways that have low density uh, traffic and those types of things. Okay, so Nicholas, you're in the States, and yes, it's the DOT. Okay, so Nicholas, I have been pulled over numerous times by the DOT and by the CVSE, is what we call them here in Canada, the Commercial Vehicle Safety Enforcement Officers. Don't be too freaked out by the diesel bears, as, as we call them in the trucking industry. Just you know, be polite. Uh, you're probably not running a logbook with a dump truck. You're probably running local. You know, as long as you got your truck fairly decent shape, you know, when they open the doors, there isn't garbage rolling out of the cab and those types of things, uh, you're going to be fine, right? Don't be belligerent with them. Don't cuss at them and go, oh, why are you pulling me over, right? Because they have, they have the right to pull you over and do a, a safety inspection on your vehicle. And as long as you pull you over with uh, autumn, you know, 20 years ago, the biggest problem with commercial vehicles was the brakes run of adjustment. Well, now we have automatic slack adjusters on air brakes, and it's unlikely that your brakes are going to be out of adjustment. And you are allowed one of the brake chambers to be out of adjustment on a pre-trip inspection. So it's not likely that you're going to get fined. Okay, so it's, it's probably just more anxiety because it hasn't happened to you yet, but if it happens, it's probably not going to be a big deal as long as you're polite to them and, and nice to them and those types of things, okay? So, uh, so yeah, so that should answer your question. All right, so it doesn't look like we're even going to get 15 minutes tonight with the kids here. I might have to go and ask them to go and do something else, like play with the phones or something. So, okay, Gladys, uh, Gladys rather. Uh, I see the headlights of the cars in my rearview mirror and side mirrors. Does that mean it's safe to pass to the next lane? Okay, so are you, Gladys, are you talking about changing lanes uh, on a multi-lane highway? Is that what you're talking about? Rudy, how's it going? Okay. Okay, so Eric, I noticed you always put the car in gear and pull the brake lever. Forget the name. Is it necessary for all cars, Class C and Texas? Uh, Eric, yes, when you have a commercial vehicle or any other vehicle, it's always a good idea to put on the parking brake uh, when you park the vehicle. It's just a good habit to get into regardless of where, whether you have an automatic vehicle or whether you have a manual vehicle. Anytime you park the vehicle, just put the parking brake on. All right. So, Anne-Marie, I'm from Nanaimo on the island, Vancouver Island. Uh, I'm coming down to the Vancouver Island on the weekend, Anne-Marie. 
Uh, learners on Wednesday, so nervous, but still studying. I really find that your videos are very educational and helpful. Thank you. School starts in November. You are most welcome, Anne-Marie. Uh, you're going to do fine as well. Anne-Marie, you're probably going for a class five license. Make sure you go over to the Smart Drive Test website and over on the right-hand menu there, there are class five uh, practice driving test questions that will help you out as well. And you probably know as well, <laughs> and as you probably know as well, the Richmond Public Library, if you just type in Richmond Public Library, driving test questions, you can go there as well and get more practice driving test questions. Okay, so Sam said that his last name is in fact pronounced the way that Corey said it is. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, I put, I mispronounce it too, Sam, so you can get that. Okay, uh, Ruth, uphill, downhill parking while turning the steering wheel to either left or right. Should I shift to neutral or just step on the brake? Uh, Ruth, you should be turning the steering wheel as you're coming into the parking. So make sure you have a look at the video on uphill, downhill parking here, and you'll see that while I'm still moving, because what that's called is, is when you're turning the steering wheel and the vehicle stop, that's called dry steering, and it's hard on your tires. So you want to try and be moving forward a little bit while you're turning the steering wheel, okay? So you want to be manipulating the steering wheel as you're coming into the space. And sometimes you're going to have to do it fairly aggressively to get the steering wheel turned uh, to get into the space, all right? Okay. Okay, so Gladys, you're talking about turning, uh, merging lanes while you're on a highway. If you're on a highway and you're at highway speeds at 50 kilometers an hour or whatnot, you need to have the vehicle back fairly far. Uh, so you want to have at least the front end of that other vehicle in the mirror to be a third of the size of the mirror, depending on what kind of vehicle you are driving and how big the mirror is. Okay, so know that as well. And make sure that before you start moving over, you shoulder check a couple of times to make sure that the way is clear. And before you start merging, have three, sp three flashes on the signal because you need three flashes. The first flash is to get the attention of other vehicles. The second flash is for them to locate you. And the third flash is for them to take some sort of evasive action in response to your request to move over to that other lane. All right. Okay, so Nicholas, thank you. I've not been pulled over, but have been nervous since I started driving my own truck. Vids are awesome. Okay, thank you so much, Nicholas. Yeah, try not to worry about it too much. It's like I said, as long as you're not belligerent with them, and a lot of times they're going to try and help you out. If you like, uh, when I first started driving, I didn't know how to do logbooks, and uh, I remember I went into the, I just pulled into the scale in Montana. And I went into this into the shack and I talked to the DOT officer and I said, listen, I don't know how to do this. I said, I'm having some trouble with this. Can you give me a hand with this? And a lot of times if you have some trepidation, Nicholas, I might just suggest that you just go in to the scale house and go in and talk to the officer, say, listen, I'm having some trouble or I, you know, I just, you know, I haven't been pulled over before. I don't know what to expect and those types of things. And they're more than happy to help you out. So that might be another suggestion for you too. Okay, so Andrew, the, the flashing orange light is not in connection to a traffic island or any sign, just hangs like a regular set of traffic lights. Okay, so it's a flashing, so it look, is it an, it's probably an amber light that you're talking about, Andrew, and it just, it's just um, tells drivers to be cautious while proceeding through the intersection. I will have a look at that, Andrew, and I'll get back to you with a specific answer about that. Okay, Billy James. Now, now that everybody's coming on and the comments are starting to steamroll in here, <laughs> If I don't get to your question, ask your question again because the, the comments are starting to roll by now and there's getting a lot of them. And if I miss your question, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's because I didn't see your question because there's a lot of them here that I'm trying to answer all at the same time. Okay. Uh, Biotech, thanks so much for answering my question. Really appreciate it. You are most welcome, Biotech. Okay. Anthony passed my driving test yesterday. That's awesome. And... What first car? Anthony, I am a Toyota and a Honda person, and I am completely and utterly biased in that opinion about used vehicles, secondhand vehicles. I have a 1998 Honda, and if you watch some of the videos here, I just had some interesting mechanical problems with my Honda. Uh, the, the rotor broke in it, which times the spark plugs in relation to the pistons, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the Honda broke down, but it's running again and it runs fine and it's a 20 year old vehicle so honda toyota that's what i would recommend to you okay for especially if you're buying a second hand vehicle all right diamond 
Okay, so you're having some challenges with uh, breaking downhill. One of the reasons that you're having difficulty diving with breaking downhills is because obviously you've got gravity pushing the vehicle down. So what you need to do is you need to start braking earlier so you have more space to get the vehicle to a stop. So that's one of the things you can do when you're braking downhill. Okay. Okay. Uh, Furious, how do I make sure that I do not hit the car in front of me when parallel parking? Okay, one of the things uh, when you're parallel parking furious not to hit the car in front of you is make sure you have enough space and go slowly because if you go slowly while you're backing into the space, it's going to make sure that you have ample room between you and the other vehicles and fixed objects on the roadway. And as well, if you're not sure and you're still having some difficulty determining where that side of the vehicle is when you're backing up, Get out and look. Just stop the vehicle and get out and look. And that's how you're going to learn. <laughs> Somebody just asked if you smoke a cigarette while you're on your road test. The answer is definitively no. Okay. So uh, get out and look. And that way you're going to learn space management of your vehicle in space and place. And the other thing that I would suggest to you, Furious, is to go back to the parking lot with those 36-inch one-tall pylons and... Practice slow speed maneuvers and have a look at the video down in the description underneath here and there's a video on mastering the primary controls and working with those 36 inch tall one meter tall pylons and as well doing the two by four exercise okay <laughs> Jarek uh, Sam I don't know if I should say this I don't want to scare anyone one of our students crashed one of our cars on a road test last Friday she overcorrected to the right and hit a minivan uh, yeah, well, unfortunately, sometimes that happens, Sam, as you and I know. Uh, there's been a couple of times that I've seen that happen uh, during road tests. And, uh, you know, it, we drive cars, and it's a possibility of things that could potentially happen on road tests. So, you are most welcome, Diamond. Biotech, how to change lanes without waving on highway while maintaining traffic speeds. Okay, Biotech, one of the things you need to do is you need to do those lane changes in low density traffic and that way you'll get accustomed to that and you won't be waving as well the other thing that I suggest for you as well is to do those exercises with 36 inch tall one meter tall pylons learning how to master the primary controls and as well do the two by four exercise all of those slow speed maneuver exercises and those exercises for primary controls will translate into your overall driving and begin to eliminate that problem of waving with the steering wheel while you're trying to do lane changes as well. The other problem that you're probably having is uh, with your shoulder checks. You're looking too long when you're turning your head 90 degrees. So it's just a quick snap of the head, less than half a second when you're turning to look with your peripheral vision uh, during your shoulder check. So know that as well, that you gotta do your shoulder checks more quickly. Okay, Sam, the examiner said it happened so fast he didn't get a chance to stop the car. Yeah, and unfortunately, sometimes that happens, right, Sam? That just like in an instant, you're like, oh, my God, where's the car going? <laughs> and you don't have time to intervene. So, yeah. And especially with driving examiners, they're not really, they're not like us who are driving instructors who are always ready to intervene at a moment's notice. And we're more in tune with what the students are doing. Whereas driving examiners aren't uh, in tune with what, uh, they're not really in, in tune with the students because they only met the student three minutes before. So it's they're, I wouldn't say they're not as in tune with the student as we would be. So maybe we, we might have got it, we might not have got it. Okay? <laughs> awesome. Maybe the driving examiner would cut me some slack. <laughs> you are most welcome, Hassan. And thanks for making me laugh. Okay, so... I think we got about another 10 minutes here before my two kids kill themselves in the background if anybody else has questions. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to say, uh, for those of you training now that we're coming into fall, for those of us in the north, uh, those of us in Canada, okay, excuse me for one minute, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. All right. So, yeah, Sam. Yeah, I agree with you, Sam. Okay. Uh, 
Nora, I'm already in the USA and I'm going back to my home country. My brother will help me, but it's about stick shift. Yeah, okay, so that's good. And Nora, have a look at the videos here on the channel too as well about uh, how to drive a manual car and that will help you with that as well. Um, Jessica, uh, not can you reword that question for me, Jessica, about uh, do you have any videos on where it is to safe to turn and where it is not safe? Are you, t are you talking about illegal turns and those types of, types of things? Okay, thrill around. Should you ever be leaning to check cars coming in your side mirrors? Uh, yeah, you can uh, definitely. Thriller Island, you need, you, sometimes I'm leaning forward to look in the mirrors and those types of things. And sometimes you need to move uh, in the vehicle to get a better position to see and those types of things. So, yeah, know that as well. Yeah, Brett. Yeah, I got two kids in the background and, you know, being a single dad, unfortunately. And, you know, it's great fun because dad's on the computer talking on the computer. So that's what we're doing. Okay, Ruth, my sister wants to know if you use that neutral gear for downhill up here parking. She will have a road test next week. Thanks. Okay, uh, Ruth, you don't need to use neutral. The car, when you, the only time that you need to let the vehicle roll back is when you're parking uphill with a curb, and you need to let the back of the steer tires roll back against the curb. Uh, usually, if you just release the brake, the vehicle will roll back on its own. You don't really need to put it in neutral. If it won't roll back, then you can just pop it into neutral. And most automatic transmissions, if you just push it forward once, it will click into neutral. That's all you need to do, and then it will roll back. Okay, so that's all you need to do. Uh, so Andrews was quite new, but kept giving me transmission and brake problems Was replacing calipers pads every year. Is this the case with most Hondas, or should I go back to Toyota? Uh, Andrew, that's not something that I uh, am aware of that is a problem with most Hondas. My Honda has not had that problem at all. Um, I have heard, and I, but I don't know whether this is true, Andrew, about transmissions on Hondas, that automatic transmissions on Hondas, that's, I have had rumors about that there is some problems with the automatic transmissions. I, I Like I said, I drive a five-speed, so it's a manual transmission, so I haven't been having the same problem with that. Oh, okay, Jessica, yes, illegal turns. Okay, so Jessica, you need to look uh, for the overhead signs and those will tell you whether you cannot turn at intersections. So just be looking up at the traffic light. That that no turning sign is usually up at the traffic lights and that will tell you that as well. Uh, right turns are usually in complex intersections. There's slip lanes and those types of things, one-way roads and those types of things. So that's how you figure out illegal uh, turns that where you can't turn left or turn right. There will be a sign and it's usually up at the traffic lights. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brett. That's really great. Yeah, well, most days it goes fairly well. So, okay. Uh, Corey, as a truck driver, do you own the truck or is it usually a company truck? Okay, Corey, it depends. Uh, some truck drivers own their own vehicle. They're called, called owner operators and then they go on and they become they own a trucking company essentially is what they do uh, a lot of drivers are simply company drivers because trucks are expensive like even if you buy a second-hand truck it's probably fifty sixty thousand dollars depending on whether it's a day cab what's called a day cab which is just like a big pickup truck that pulls trailers or you have a sleeper unit on it so you can buy your own truck but most new CDL drivers commercial driving licenses uh, start out as company drivers and they work for a company okay uh, Savannah, uh, as I said earlier in the video, somebody asked me recommendations, uh, Toyotas or Hondas. That's my recommendation uh, for a secondhand vehicle. Uh, as well, what I do suggest, Savannah, is if you're going to uh, somebody that you're going to buy it privately from or you're going to buy it from a dealer, I always do tell people, take the vehicle to a mechanic and get a, an inspection done on it because for less than $100 getting an inspection done on a vehicle they will be able to tell you exactly what's wrong with the vehicle and uh, give you a report and whether you should buy that vehicle and how much it's going to cost you to keep it running and whatnot so that's what I really suggest and if the dealership or the person won't let you take it to a mechanic for a private inspection then uh, then simply don't buy it walk away from it okay and the other thing you want to look into is if you're you have winter time 
then if you can get winter tires with the secondhand vehicle, because oftentimes they'll sell winter tires with it, that's something else that you probably want to look into, especially while we're going into winter here. <laughs> oh, Ruth, are you in Vernon? I would be more than happy to do that for you, Ruth. That's, that's a great offer. Okay, Thompson. Oh, that's, that's great information, uh, Thompson. That's great. Uh, Andrew, uh, Thompson suggested running your VIN number, and then you can find out if there's a recall on your vehicle. There might be a recall on that vehicle, which is some really good advice. Okay, uh, Gusha, what was the question about the Chatham Test Center? I didn't see it here. I'm sorry. I did see something about Chatham, but I didn't get it. So just ask me the question about Chatham again, and I'll have a look at that for you. Okay. Andy passed his road test this past Friday. Thank you for all the vids and these live Q&As and videos. You are most welcome, Andy, and thank you for the compliment and your words and telling us that you passed. That is really awesome. I just, I just like I said, I, I'm working hard to get all that up on the website now so that we have a record of all the great smart drivers that have been successful on the road test. Uh, Thriller Island, the t tires need to be rotated, the suspension could be off, that could be one of the reasons, Andrew, why your brakes and rotors are going on your vehicle, because you've got something else going on. Uh, you are most welcome. Uh, hi, Lily. Uh, my pleasure to get all this and helping you guys to get your license and get that freedom of having a vehicle and whatnot. And, as well, the Smart Drive Test channel youtube channel last week had a bit of success as well we passed the milestone of twenty five thousand subscribers last week which uh you know <laughs> is a bit of a you know a milestone for me and really awesome because uh any of you if if any of you are thinking about starting a youtube channel the first year is really the most grit and grind of getting these things going because i can remember so we are now in October 1st, 2017. Uh, in May 2016, which was my birthday, I was I was begging people for 100 subscribers. So, and then a year later on my birthday, I hit 10,000 subscribers. And, but it was a lot of work and a lot of nights editing videos up and whatnot. So, okay, Ivan says the Mazda 3 is quite decent as well for a used car. So that's another uh, possibility uh, for a second-hand vehicle okay thank you thriller island yeah that's really great 25,000 so I'm gonna do a video on that and just sort of anybody who might be interested in um, you know doing YouTube and whatnot it's it's a good possibility but you know being a driving instructor I've been a driving instructor for a long time and also you know I went to university for a few years <laughs> Got a graduate degree and a couple other degrees, so. All right. Billy James. Okay, every time I turn, the turn isn't smooth. I feel like I can't control it. The turn is wobbly, and I can't turn it back after I've com completed the turn. Any reason why? Uh, Billy, do you have power steering on your vehicle? And the other thing, are there decent tires on the front of the vehicle? And when was the last time you checked the tire pressure on the vehicle? Okay, and... Do you is there a possibility that you simply need some more practice? And one of the things again, I come back to mastering the primary controls. Have a look down in the description there in the in the video for mastering the primary controls, working with those 36 inch one meter tall pylons, and doing the two by four exercise. I strongly encourage you to do that, especially if you're having trouble with turns and, and corners and whatnot. Yeah, thanks, Corey, so much. Yeah, that's really great, 25000 So I'm going to, yeah, like I said, I'm going to get a video up this week about that and just, uh, you know, try and make it a little more formal because uh, it's, uh, it's, a good, it's a good feeling. It's, it's a good feeling because I know, unfortunately, there's lots of naysayers out there who have, you know, done YouTube channels and those sorts of things. Oh, and they're like, oh, you can't do it and this and that and blah, blah, blah. No, it can be done because I've done it in the last year and a half, and it, it, is, it is a possibility. If you want to do it, you can do it. Okay. Uh, okay, Gusha, if it's only about 10 minutes, that is a, that is a very real possibility because uh, Sam here, who's in the Bronx in New York City, will tell you that most of the road tests, and I've heard this from other people, on the eastern seaboard, uh, the road tests are only 8 to 10 minutes, maybe 12 minutes. So if it's only 10 minutes in Chatham, 
that's a very real possibility. So, I mean, that's really, that's really good for you. Okay. Uh, so the reason it's short is because those of us who are sort of, you know, instructors and examiners and those types of things, when we get in the vehicle with you, if we get you to do a parallel park or we get you to drive out onto a highway, we know in a fort very short distance of time, whether you can drive or not, whether you have due care and control of the vehicle for the purposes of passing a road test. And that's all you have to do for the purposes of a road test is to demonstrate to the examiner that you have due care and control of the vehicle. And all you have to do is take away the examiner's right to fail you. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay. Thanks so much, Thriller, Thriller Island. Yes, a year and a half. But <laughs> Thriller Island, I'll tell you something else I did. Last year at this time, uh, at the beginning of September in 2016, I hit two days of watch time. So for those of you who don't know about YouTube, YouTube's not about subscribers. YouTube's about watch time. How much time do people spend watching your videos? So in September 2016, I hit two days of watch time. So that meant for the, every minute of the day, people are watching two minutes of video. I'm, I'm a lot higher than that now, but that's what I hit. So I'm like, okay, this, finally, this thing finally turned off because up till that point, I was like, this thing isn't even on. <laughs> so in September 2016, I said, I'm going to make a video every day, six days a week. And I did that. And I said, I'm going to hit 10 days of watch time by Christmas. Well, I hit 10 days of watch time by the middle of October. I hit 20 days of watch time by Christmas. So I doubled my goal for Christmas. And I made a video every day until the mid-November. And then I sort of backed off a little bit. Because <laughs> making a video every day, six days a week, is enough to really burn you out. So I, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend having a longer plan. So that was, that was one of the things that I did. Okay, Anthony, how long does it take for the Secretary of State to mail in a driver's license? Uh, Anthony, if you don't get a driver's license in six to eight weeks, then I would be getting in contact with them and ask them where your driver's license is, okay? All right, uh, biotech. Thank you so much for that biotech. That's really awesome. And like I said, uh, I got a video up tonight, Curves and Corners, that talks about that and, and strategies that you can implement for negotiating curves and corners better and with more control and uh, to, you know, maybe go at a bit higher speed than what the cautionary signs might recommend. Okay, Sam. Yes, 8 to 10 minutes, about 15 on a rainy day and 20 when the examiner has to go to the restroom. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So, uh, yeah, so Gusha, there you go. Uh, Sam was just saying that about Eastern Seaboard DMV tests, which is the Department of Motor Vehicles in the U.S., and that would probably be the same in Chatham, that it would only be about 10 minutes, right? Because what's happened is the other reason that they're pushing so many th people through biotech is because they have a backlog of road tests, and they're trying to keep up with those road tests. So they have, they have a certain number that they have to do in a day, and they're allotted only a certain amount of time to get a road test done. Because you have to realize it's not just a car road tests that they're doing. They're also doing motorcycle road tests. They're also doing small and big bus road tests. They're doing class three, which is dump trucks. And they're doing tractor trailer license. And a tractor trailer license takes two and a half hours. Okay. So know that, that they're trying to get a lot of people through. Okay. Uh, Parthena says that her road test was 22 minutes. It was in Connecticut, but it was okay. So there you go. There's another one. Okay. bricks for wheels. Uh, Corey, yeah, there were a few times I've been unsure about students' abilities. Uh, but, you know, not too many. But, I mean, one of the things that Sam and I will both tell you is, is that as a driving instructor, you know that at the beginning of driving lessons, you don't just take the person out into heavy traffic at complex intersections. You always, good instructors know that no matter what the student says to you, no matter what claims students make to you, you always take students to a closed circuit area first and assess their ability their abilities because the first lesson isn't just about teaching the student introducing the student to the car and those types of things the first lesson for any driving instructor is an assessment for learning what is the student's ability and what is the student's ability to take on learning and take on information and incorporate that and begin to implement that into their driving so that's the other thing that you're doing on a first lesson with a student all right, so I'm just going to reiterate again, I did say this earlier uh, in the live stream, that now that we're getting into winter time, uh, for those of you learning how to drive, 
you're going to have to be able to turn on the creature comforts, the defroster, and you're going to have to be able to activate the windshield wipers and those types of things. So as well, uh, look at the video down in the description on secondary controls and make sure that you're practicing turning on windshield wipers and turning on defrosters and those types of things and being able to clean the windshield while you're driving uh, and while you're learning how to drive and practicing how to drive and those types of things for the purposes of, the, of your road test. You are most welcome, Gusha. Uh, and anything that we can do. Okay. Let's see. Who else? Okay. Did I get everybody? I think we got most of the questions here. <laughs> I still like the question about smoking a cigarette. All right, so we're going to do a couple of videos this week. AT, how are you? Uh, <laughs> no, they're not letting dangerous drivers on the road, AT. You can tell in 10 minutes whether uh, somebody can drive or not. Uh, for sure, let me tell you that, because I can tell very quickly when somebody gets into a vehicle within two minutes, I can tell whether they can drive or not. It's really about ability and comfort and those types of things it's like it's like any uh skill it's like watching somebody work a skill saw uh you can tell very quickly whether they're safe with that skill saw or not it's like them driving a vehicle you can tell very quickly uh matt <laughs> no i don't think i can rap can rap okay george i failed my g license for too many mistakes and i saw my sheet with my mistakes and i was so in shock she put that i hit the curb also that i did not parallel park my car oh well, I'm sorry to hear that, that unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, Jorge, uh, sometimes uh, driving examiners like the rest of us have bad days and things do not go well. So, um, you know, maybe the driving examiner is having a bad day. I don't know. I can't comment because I wasn't there, but I do feel badly about that. So, uh, yeah, it, it's incredibly frustrating. But know that it's not a reflection of who you are and a reflection of your ability um you know because sometimes you know people make bad decisions it's like referees in in you know football games and those types of things make sometimes they make bad calls and examiners do as well so uh you know what i would suggest is just do it again and you know try not to i know it's hard because it's frustrating it's frustrating and it, it eats at us at our self-confidence and it frustrates us to no end so but you know just trying to keep going okay Sam, that's correct. I always ask new students if they've driven before, I'll not let them drive in a congested area. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you a story about that, Sam. I had uh, two, a couple, a husband and wife team who was getting, they had a, they had a, they had a bus or something. I think they had a resort. So they were trying to get a bus license to work on the, um, to drive the bus and the bus had air brakes. So I sat with them all weekend and I was teaching them air brakes and then they got in the bus and they're like, oh yeah, we've driven big vehicles before and blah, blah, blah and whatnot. And I'm like, okay. So we got in the bus and drove the bus and we make it a right hand turn. Well, we weren't out in the bus one minute and he took the corner too short and crashed into the concrete barrier, scratched the bus. It wasn't huge, but it was, <laughs> it was a learning for me that no matter what a student says, Always, always, always take them to a controlled area, parking lot or some other place where I can control it and assess their abilities because especially in larger commercial vehicles, never take what they say at face value. So <laughs> always take them to a controlled area. Uh, Thompson, what are you required to bring if it is second time taking the G test? Uh, same thing that you always bring, uh, Thompson. Uh, have a look. Uh, go to the website, uh, the Smart Drive Test website. I need to fix it right now, but there's a checklist on test day uh, checklist for things that you need to break. You need to bring two pieces of identification, picture identification. You need to bring money. And uh, if you're wearing prescription glasses or you have any other requirements on your license that you need, you need to bring that stuff. So that's essentially what you need to do. And of course, you need to bring a vehicle that is, will pass the mini pre-trip inspection that they're going to do at the test center for you. The horn has to work, the lights, those types of things as well. There's a video here, and I, it's probably down in the description, uh, Thompson, for doing a pre-trip inspection. If you're taking your personal vehicle, uh, make sure you do that because you don't want to be denied your road test because you've got a brake light or something else out that could easily be fixed within 10 minutes before you show up for your test, okay? So make sure you do that before you go for your road test. 
All right. Uh, yeah, we're up to 45 minutes here. I don't think anybody else has any questions. Uh, what am I doing this week? Um, I'm going to try and get uh, the changing tire video done, and I'm going to get a navigation video done. Some of you have asked me to do GPS and um, uh, navigation on your phone as well. So how to navigate, and I'm going to show you how to do that and give you some techniques and whatnot because I learned how to navigate <laughs> in a tractor trader unit and and I learned to navigate before cell phones which isn't that long ago I'm really not that old but before cell phones before GPS and basically all you did was you call people up and got directions with a map a paper map and if you got lost in a tractor trader you had to find a payphone not only did you have to find a payphone you had to find one where you could park a 75 foot vehicle so I have some strategies and techniques that you can implement to uh, navigate better in places where you don't know where you're going. So I'm going to work on that. And I'm either going to have an introduction to the tractor, to the truck, big truck, like dump truck, uh, tractor trailer unit, or I'm going to finish up the changing tire video for this week. So that's what I'm going to try and get done this week for you. Okay, Ahmed. Uh, Yes, if the passenger seat belt doesn't work, Ahmed, they will not go up for a road test for you because the examiner is not safe. The seat belt has to work for the passenger. So in other words, the examiner has to be belted in. If it's not working, get, make sure you get that fixed or take another vehicle. Okay, Thompson, good luck on your road test tomorrow in Hamilton. You're going to do awesome. Thriller Island, learn to navigate via Thompson Maps. Thompson Maps. What are Thompson Maps, Thriller? <laughs> Jericho, I remember the map days. Yeah, I remember the map days too. <laughs> we had a big laminated one in the truck there. Okay, so that's essentially it for this week. We're going to leave it there. I'll be around for a couple of minutes on comments. If you have any questions at all, uh, leave me a comment as well. Uh, if you like the live stream, hit the like button there. That's really great. That helps us out. And uh, if you want more information, be sure to subscribe. Uh, head over to the Smart Drive Test website and sign up for the test day checklist and you can get that as well. And pass your road test first time guaranteed. Uh, when I put the video up here, uh, there will be a coupon. If you go over to the Smart Drive Test website, you get 30% off pass your road test first time guaranteed. All right. So everybody having um, road tests this week, good luck on your road test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.